Hello. Chip. I am so glad we have so many people today because we have a lot of important business to talk about. And I'm actually going to dive right in and attempt to keep an eye on if other people are joining as we talk, but I don't want to delay getting into things. Yeah, Georgia plays uh, Alabama in one hour. <laughs> I can't promise we'll be done in an hour, but you'll be done before the first quarter. <laughs> okay. Did everybody get a chance? There's Donna to review the minutes that I sent around. Thank you, Jane. Uh, the minutes from our December meeting. I did. I'll make a motion to accept as written. I'll second. Um, okay, we have to do the roll call thing. Chris? Yeah. Come here. Oh, um, yes, I, I agree with the meeting minutes. Okay, I say yes, Adelia. Yes. Jane? <laughs> Thank you, because there were mistakes. Oh, Bill? Yep. Frosty? Yes. Fred? Yep. Chip? Yep. I'm going to skip over people who were not at the meeting, because obviously you can't vote on the minutes. Keith? Yes. Brenda? Hey, Susan? Yeah. Uh, point of order, you don't have to have been to the meetings. You just have to agree with what is on the uh, meeting minutes. Oh, okay. But how do you know if you're agreeing to the right things? Okay, okay, we'll do it that way, Don. Yes. Uh, other Don or Donald? We have to have one Don, one Donald. Call me Bates. Bates, okay, Bates. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Do you approve of the minutes? Me? Yes. Because Don oh. just said you don't have to have been at the meeting to approve. You can abstain if you. Sure. Okay, Brenda? Katie? Yes. Keith? Yes. Lisa? Yes. John? Yes. Sarah? You're muted, but I think you're. Yes. <laughs> Ashley? Yes. And Steve? Hmm. With this rule of having to do a roll call on everything, the meetings are going to be, it's going to be way longer. Okay, so the minutes are, the minutes from the December meeting are approved. Thank you. Fundraising, a very, very important topic. So I had... <laughs> Let me share my screen. Can you all see this spreadsheet on my screen? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. So for those of you who um, are new to our to our meetings, we had divvied up local businesses who, we, who was going to contact whom for donations. As of this afternoon, we had two donations, one and very, very little information of what was going on with fundraising. So I was kind of in a panic. Um, Fred, uh, Fred's business contributed $1,000 and identified sponsoring the Hidden History Project, which is about $1,000. And we received a $100 donation from someone you called on, Adelia, uh, Dan Drolet. And that was it. Um, I see that there are some chip that you have checked that you have contacted uh, some of yours. Any success, any reports on that? Uh, yeah, the only one, <laughs> this is pretty good. I went to deliver something to Carol Gobin Fine Arts, the address being 196 Chestnut Plain Road, and that's the post office. So unless she's living in the back of the post office, that, 
That okay. is incorrect. So we're not going to worry about that one. Yeah. And then there was another one, environmental design and systems on 94 State Road. I drove up and down 94 State Road. I don't know how many times. I couldn't find 94 State Road anywhere. Okay, so for now, I'm going to take that one off. Okay. Yeah. The ones that Everything you, else. Contact, you did contact, any, any yeah. word from them? From any of these people that I um, uh, contacted? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't received any obligations for any amounts. Specific. Okay. What, what I'm going to ask people to do is um, keep this filled in. It is critical to enter in who you talk to um, and what's going on. Brenda, I see your hand is up. I'm going to have to say people don't rely on having your hands up. If I don't call on you, speak up because more of you than will fit on my screen. But Brenda, do you have a comment? I don't know where Brenda went. Okay, Chris, where did Chris go? I'm gonna turn, I don't know. I'm hoping you're still I'm here. <laughs> okay, I can't see everybody, but Chris, why don't you report to the group what you were telling me this afternoon? Sure, so. Susan, Susan, can I interrupt for just a moment? Yes. Okay. Now, when we go to vote, vote, will it work if people put on reaction at the bottom of the screen? And if they put thumbs up, does that appear on our? Yeah, it does. Will it want more than one person appear at once? Are we allowed to do that? Does anybody know if that counts? That does not have... count as voting, no. Okay, no, okay. We, have, we have to do the roll call. Okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the interruption. Chris. No problem. So you, would you like me to go through all of the businesses I contacted? Just, just the one. Just, let's start with the big news. Yes. Okay. So I was delighted to hear back from um, the contact uh, at Yankee Candle named Megan. And just to... Uh, get the business over with. Um, unfortunately, the timeline on having a candle made with a scent, um, we don't have enough time and the lot would be too small for them, really. Um, so unfortunately, a candle isn't going to happen for um, as a souvenir for sale. Um, however, she, she was um, uh, enthusiastic and um, definitely wanted um, to participate and sponsor and partner. So um, she is going to speak with her boss and they're going to get together um, a cash contribution and um, souvenirs and, and um, other sorts of support they may be interested in um, contributing. Um, she did want to say that um, the cash contribution will not be $25,000. So our, our top category. However, um, they're very interested and definitely want to support Waitley and um, um, are interested in being, um, uh, uh, having their logo as a, um, as a sponsor um, on our materials and at the events. So uh, she thought, um, I think she and I are gonna touch base again on February 3rd, that'll give her some time to speak with the people she needs to around the budget. Fantastic. That's, that is amazing. Any other updates on people on your list? Let's see, the other one you, you also contacted two guys? I haven't heard back from them. Okay. I have, I have something to say, Susan, this is Ashley. Yeah. Um, I heard back from um, Nasami Farm, and they're interested in doing an in-kind contribution of native plants. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if that could somehow be looped in with what we're doing with the bench, with the gift to the town or something like that. Um, but I think it's a, it's a very nice offer and that we should figure out a way to take advantage of it somehow. 
let's let's talk about in-kind contributions. I know I'm, I'm getting things a little out of order. In-kind contributions are great when it's something that we would be otherwise spending money on or something that is of value with us. And I'm, I'm not talking specifically about Norse. I want to be sensitive to the fact companies are going to want to give us things because they get the tax right off and it doesn't really cost them money. Things or services, we, I, I believe very strongly we need to be picky about what of those we take because we don't want donations that are of no value to us, that make work for us, that involve additional expenses. So you know, the native plants could be lovely. And if we set up something, as you suggest, around the bench, that's something to think about. But I want to make sure that every in-kind contribution is of value. <clears throat> Uh, Keith, I know you had mentioned in kinds um, last month, but you had some people who were interested in them, and I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Yeah, I, I agree that it's it's got to be something that 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 we are looking for and needing. Um, for instance, the electrician with the with the birthday cake. We needed an electrician. Mark Bushier stepped up. So those are the kinds of things that the in-kind is more likely for. Um, you know, if a business has something that we need, so be it. Um, not saying that there may be an opportunity to do something at the library, but um, I don't have that answer at this point in time. I don't know if Allison's on tonight yet or not. Uh, Allison couldn't join us and Cindy couldn't join us. Okay. And so, um, like I say, I don't know at the moment. Yeah. About that. And you know, when I think about that, it's it's a lovely gesture, but it's adding work because we now have to figure, you know, devote resources to what we're how we're going to use them, where we're going to put them, designing something around them. Right. And uh, I'm not sure where those resources are going to come from. The right. other thing that I want to say, and I'm going I'm going to be really blunt tonight. Unless Yankee and some of the other places, I'm going to call the big hitters on our list that we haven't heard from, come through, we have to do serious budget cutting. We have to scale back what we're talking about. And, and I will get back to that in a second. I just want to make sure, is there anyone else who has what I'm going to call an important update to this list? Anybody who has promised money. I take silence as no, in which case I would say we really need you to go back to these places and see what you can get in the way of money. <laughs> um, which actually is a segue into our list of events, bear with me while I get this so that you all can see it. Okay, can you all now see, first column is a list of events and other information on this sheet? Yep. Yes. Okay. I think that I would like to do Okay, so these are the events, and I want to talk about important events. And we have, you know, we have some people here who I think can report in on things, and we will go through these. But this spreadsheet has our original budget numbers assigned, um, where we have them, and we have some events we don't have budgets for. For example, um, the Arts and Crafts Show is a big one that we don't have budget numbers for. Our cap is $70,000 unless we raise money. And that's got to cover every penny we spend or else we all are going to be out of pocket. We cannot spend more than we have. Joyce is about to join us, which is great. 
Um, so I want to go through the list of events very quickly. You know, is there any key update? But also look at the amount in the budget column and we need to finalize those numbers. At the bottom here, it says how much the total is. To give you an idea how this works, if you can I say something? Hold on, hold on one second. Okay. You will see if I put in five thousand dollars, this number goes red. So we have to watch. I just picked five thousand randomly. We have to watch this number. Yes. Okay. The uh, Friends of the Waitley Library uh, received $1,000 from the Arts Council and went for a summer concert. And we could certainly take that $1,000 that we have. We were thinking of TJ and the Peepers or Old Country Road to be done. And it could be to one of those two weekends as part of that. Also, the Big Bad News Jazz Band. Um, I don't know what they were going to do for that, but the Arts Council, but the Friends really want to put it on for the 250th. And that's, um, I think it's 1500 bucks. So I think I can get you a couple concerts right there that will give you some entertainment and you could decide where and when you wanna have them. They don't have to be in the end of August. We can make it that the period of the two weeks so that we would firm up a dates with TJ and the other people that are involved. And the guy that's in charge of Bad News Bears, a bad, bad, badass Jan's man is, um, from Wes Waitley. So, I mean, it would be, it, it would be a, a great concert. And I had already talked to Joyce Palmer Fortune about it. And uh, I think that's why she just put one of the concerts in there, but it's nothing you're gonna pay for. We're gonna pay for it that because we want to do it. Thank you. Okay. And you know, if we could get the, the Shelburne Falls Military Band up in there, they are absolutely fabulous. And they're like 400 bucks. Okay. So, I mean, we're, we'd love to have them and to, we want to support the, um, the uh, whole event in those two weeks. Okay, so, so I just... do not want to put that in our, in as an expense, mm -mm. but I want to capture how much, how much do you think the friends of the library can put towards concerts? I would say at least two grand. Okay, that is great. Because that would be a thousand for the TJ, or we always spend more, we always do. We end up spending about 200, uh, 2200, I think it is, but we want to do something to help the town because ever the people in the town have been so supportive of us. So, you know, I can make that happen, believe me. And, you know, there's puppeteers, there's other people that we can get um, in other grants to the school that we could just have them those two periods and you're not paying for them. That is fantastic. We are. That is so generous. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to coordinate with Joyce and then come back to me as to how to adjust these numbers. Okay. Because I have identified, and Joyce, I'm, tell me if you disagree with this because you're in charge of concerts. I had identified four concert times that we had talked about during the right. dedication at the library, the dedication of the gifts to the town, um, I actually had a good conversation with Cindy about that event, which I'll get yeah. to. Uh, Watermelon Wednesday, which would be going on called the big concert, having live music at the barbecue and live music at family day. Yeah. Joyce, do you? Yeah, um, yeah I, uh, Paul and I, kept, we haven't had a meeting uh, in a little bit. We're going to have a meeting on Thursday. Um, and so I can catch up with him on how many of these he's actually been able to um, talk to artists and get through to them for family day of course he's contacting mr g i don't i don't think he was two thousand dollars he's a thousand dollars just just come yeah. for him i now think he's a, I, right i think he, he's not two thousand um that would be for family day yeah yeah um i what katie says is probably right that's closer to what i was remembering yeah, um, we tried to get him down and he wouldn't move. Yeah, but well, I mean, that's that's um, all right. I, okay. I, yeah, I, no judgment here. Nope. <laughs> um, and then the, the other places we concentrated on was the Wednesday 
And uh, then uh, most, we haven't had me and Katie and Paul all in one place, but okay. Katie and I have talked, <laughs> I have talked. So uh, the, the thing to me that I was trying to, to figure out was I can't get anybody to respond about polka night. Um, I, I tried getting a hold of John about this. Maybe John's uh, on the call here. Uh, I don't know who to talk to at the Policeman's Association Actually, or if Bates, they're even Bates aware. Is Bates is on the call. It's on tonight. Okay, good. So maybe, John, we can um, chat later about who at the Policeman's Association is doing that. I, I think I emailed John because um, uh, he was the liaison. Um, but like, for example, if they're doing that, are they going to use the town hall? If they're not going to use the town hall on Saturday night, we want to put a concert in there, right? Um, but do we want to be competing with ourselves for... We would not put a polka band opposite polka night. We would probably put something other than polka. I, I, I'm understanding that, but let, let's keep that in mind. But keep in mind, we may have to be cutting back on events. And I'm thinking oh. to have one because we're not getting anywhere on fundraising. Do you have any update on fundraising? I know that you had signed up for... I um, no, I have no update at all. Sorry. Okay. So un unless we, you know, turn things around in fundraising, let's keep an eye on it. So why? Yeah. Joyce, I think there was one other. Um, uh, the cruise night we had someone who would be great for a concert to go with cruise night, and I think they were a thousand dollars. And that's nice because it's opening night. Well, that's what I'm trying to do this. It's not cooperating. Mm -hmm. So you're saying a thousand dollars? I think that was a thousand, yeah. Okay. Is that a DJ or is that a real concert? No, it's it's the Lonesome Brothers. Oh. So no, so I, I think it's a real concert. Um, although I how many players? I think there's uh, two or three, depending on. Uh, so sometimes a band plays as a duo, sometimes as a trio. Well, the guy that we get for an hour charges us seventy five dollars for an hour. So what? And he's played at Waitley all the time. Uh, an hour of what? Of concert of Lonesome Brothers. An hour of Lonesome Brothers. Well, Brothers. Like, I don't, he's I, all by himself. Okay. In the interest of time, I'm going to interrupt and I'm going to suggest that the two of you and Paul will talk later. Talk, yeah, talk mm -hmm. offline. I, I, I'm warning you, I'm going to, I'm in drill sergeant mode tonight because we've got so much to do and we've got okay. people who want to go watch a football game. Uh, <laughs> okay. But yeah, if, if you can figure out what concerts <laughs> for when um, and, and what each one will cost, get back to me, I will keep this updated. I'm gonna go through these in the order that they're on here very quickly in terms of is there any update and look at you know, what's the budget. Snowmobile event, Joe Frosty and I traded emails. We're gonna talk later this week because they would like to feature a snowmobile event weather permitting this year, but um, I don't know that that's going to involve any money on our part. The car show cruise night, does that, Joyce, that's last time you had said, last time, many months and months ago when we did our initial budget, you had thought that that would not incur any costs for us. Uh, correct, other than the concert, yeah. Okay, polka night. Bates, I assume that's why you're here? I am, I'm assuming that is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts? Well, I, I guess I'm late to the party here and I do apologize for that. Um, so I will definitely put this on the, the forefront of my burner and I will see if I can get something before the end of the week. Oh, wow. That, that would be fantastic. And, mm -hmm. uh, I just, uh, I know I've, I've talked with Ed Zineski who I've been working with, you know, just, I mentioned to him if he, he'd help me out being on the police association. He said he would. Um, but we don't. We thought we would get some type of budget before, um, you know, talking back and forth with John briefly. Um, 
I think I misunderstood what John had to say. And I, again, I apologize for that. Um, so we're going to contact some bands, find out what their price is and what their availability will be. Because I know there is a very large uh, polka festival in Connecticut, I believe, or Long Island, right around in June sometime. Okay, yeah, I, I, I know, I don't mean to put you on the spot because you are new to this party. If you can put together what your what you would like to do and what it would cost, and then we can talk about um, what we can put in. Also, if it's a ticketed event, how much we think it will generate to basically refund us for money we give you. We can give you money for start, what I'm gonna call startup costs, out of pockets, uh, but we would then want to look at if are we selling tickets, how many do we expect, what revenue and return, so we can you know, we can model it that way. So think about what you want to do and what you think it would cost, and we'll start from there. That would be right. fantastic. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, uh, steam engine shop. I'm here. I see you. I'm looking right at you. I see what I when I saw you come on. It's like yes, yes. Well, it's nice to see everybody. Um, the one good thing about uh, about our event here is, you know, we've been doing it so long that we're pretty well self-sufficient. So there's really not, I can't, I can't really see us needing a budget for anything. Um, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll need a, a probably a porta potty just for extra support, uh, but we're willing to donate that anyways. Um, other than advertising, which you're going to be doing anyways. Yeah. Uh, I, don't see that we need anything unless there's something you expect of us that I'm not aware of. No, I just wanted to make sure that you're still good with doing it on Saturday, June 18th. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We've we that's that hasn't changed at all. Great. The, the schedule, the events here are now listed in schedule order, so we see what's happening when, just to give people an idea of that. That's great. Thank you. You tell us if you need, you know, what you need from us other than getting the word out. Okay. Tra tractor parade, Keith. Yeah, at this point in time, there's, I don't really feel I'm gonna need a budget of any significant amount there. Good. Art and Patch, uh, Lisa and Chip. Um, we're actually having our first meeting tomorrow night, so we'll have a lot more information then. A few things, Susan, I did put an um, a inquiry asking people if they wanted to move the event from the Tuesday to the Sunday. Some people don't want to compete with the fireman's muster, so I will let you know on that. Okay. And, um, and as far as money, I'm not thinking we're going to need a lot. You know, if, if it's going to be an art show, it's going to be tables and maybe easels, which a lot of artists will already have. If we want to have some food, maybe some money for some, you know, snacky kind of, you know, or derby foods. I mean, I wanted to maybe have, you know, maybe some music, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I just, we need to, I need to meet with everybody tomorrow night to yeah. see what other people want to do. But I would say <clears throat> it would definitely be under a thousand dollars. Absolutely. And that's even on the high side. Okay, I'm going to put a thousand in just as a placeholder. Yep. Uh, whoops, I keep typing extra zeros. Um, that that's great. And let me let us know which date you end up with because it's yep. your call whether you want to yep. do it the next day or. Yep. Like I said, we're having our first gathering tomorrow night, so I can send you an email after the fact and kind of let you know where we are with everything. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Keith, were you able to secure town hall for that whole week? Yeah, I have put a. Put the paperwork in for the entire to hold the town hall for the entire time okay excellent. can i ask a quick question keith how do we know how many tables the town has and how we go about getting all that um i can get that information to you if you want to email or you email me what you need and i or i can let you know what's there or Sometimes. Are they in the town? Are they in the town hall themselves, or are they there somewhere? Some, else? There is some things there now. Um, okay. All right. But all right, we can talk about this later. Okay. Thank you. Um, the ecumenical service, Adelia. We're all set with that. One hundred works. Great. 
I love a bargain. Fireman's Master, John? I'm here. I, I, I'm being a fall asleep. Um, you had originally budgeted a thousand dollars. The fireman's muster is that. I'm is sure that it'll be. I'm sure that'll be less than that. Or we can make it less than that. We we will run less events. Okay. Okay. So for the time being, thousand as a placeholder. Yep. Good. Okay. I'm going to talk for a second. This doesn't have a budget aside from concerts and things like that. The dedication. I I spoke with Cindy at the library, and she was very excited about working with the friends. Uh, to have the dedication on, the, on that Monday, the 20th, where we would dedicate the bench, and we have to talk about the bench tonight, the bench, the panorama, bury the time capsule, and unveil the quilt. Um, and she was talking about doing, you know, having music, possibly having some food. She, she was working on that, and it didn't sound like it, it was going to cost us anything that between the library and the friends, she thought that they'd have things covered. And we will. Great. Katie, do you have an update on the quilt as long as we're on that? Yeah, the quilt is, um, Teresa Manko's quilting, her quilting machine was down. So she's saving us money on that. She's quilting the whole thing herself. It's absolutely beautiful. I think you're gonna love it. I can't tell you, it's just absolutely gorgeous. We worked really hard on it. Beautiful. I can't wait to see it. Um, and really, you you spend a lot of money to get it quilted, and she's doing it. And then um, the Kellogg girl is doing the she's doing the hand quilt, the hand uh, binding. Nice. So it'll be done. Well, it'll be all ready. But we didn't <laughs> want to push press it. You know, when these machines are finicky, and if we're not paying for it, it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> we originally had a budget of five hundred dollars for the quilt. I don't know how much we have. Fred, do you know how much we've already? I don't know. They would have the figure. I think maybe it was 200 or something for the, we had to get the fabric. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe 250. I'm not, I'm okay. not really sure how much it was, but I think Irene has that. I can I'm talk okay for under on things. I just don't want to be over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We talked about concert for the dedication of the library and yeah. having the friends involved in that. Uh, what, we talked about watermelon Wednesday, the barbecue. The three thousand dollars that was put in there, I think, uh, was just seed money to, if we need money to order the chickens and pay for them. But I, the, the, the barbecue should be a money making event. Excellent. All right, and we and we had already had a motion to split the proceeds. That's already right. been done. Anything above that, if. If, for example, we sell five thousand dollars worth of tickets, or we take in five thousand dollars from that, the firefighters association would get a thousand, and a four thousand would go to back to this committee. I'm making a note of that in here, just so that it's on record. Okay, uh, we talked about having a concert at the barbecue, fireworks, Sarah. We're good and um, we're clear for that. And the budget on that can go up or down depending <clears throat> where we are. Okay, so for the time being is 8,000 a reasonable place to Yeah, to start I think with? that's a good, that's a great spot. Okay. Um, and the fireworks are the same night as the barbecue, so we would so concerts already record well, accounted for that night. Family, uh, family day. I know you all were meeting. What's going on with family day? I don't know. If, does um, Frosty? I wasn't at that last meeting. What can you report anything on that? Um, we, we didn't get into a lot of specifics. Um, we talked a little bit about the balloon rides. Maybe you Keith have a little more that, that maybe that's not going to be feasible. Yeah. As far as the balloon ride went, um, it's a matter of timing, um, based on the, well, first of all, the fact that it's in the middle of June, when we're dealing with the longest daylight, um, the heat said that the the person I talked to from 
um, Paul Cena from Worthington said he would not be able to begin to do it until somewhere around six o'clock. <clears throat> so it'd be like from six to nine is a good time frame, but yet that's not in the time frame that the um, family day is. So if we were still going to do the balloon tethered rides, we would need to maybe pair it up with another <coughs> another um, venue or another one of our events at another night. The events that I see that are happening in the evenings are the car show, polka night, um, uh, happening outdoors in the evening, with the barbecue, although the barbecue is the same night as the fireworks, so that may pose problems right. there. The uh, library dedication, we're trying to do that outdoors, and hopefully that concert is outdoors too. Oh, that's true. I mean, I don't know if that's an appropriate place to put the balloon rides, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a little hesitant on that. I don't know if we've got the, space, the physical space that we would need. Yeah, but I mean, we'll... the, the only thing I can add to it is he said he would need approximately 200 feet by 200 feet so that he can have an area where he can tether the balloon off. Um, do any of these events sound like they would work for that, given their location, given the timing? I mean, it, it is possible that it could be done in the library, in the field, as it's, you know, just to the east of, like, where the bench is going to go and, and things like that. So the library certainly is a possibility. Not at fireworks night, though. No, not on the fireworks. 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 You yeah. could have a fireworks night in your, in your parking lot, Keith. And Friday. But that the fireworks wouldn't be the same night as the dedication stuff that was, which was on Monday, June twentieth. Got it. To do the time capsule and the, everything that was going to more or less focus at the library that night. Okay. Okay, so I am tentatively moving. The balloon rides. Oops. To the to the Monday. Is that what you're saying? That we could potentially do it at the library. I mean, that would be great fun because we will have what I'm imagining is you know the same sort of audience that we would have at Family Day, meaning families, given what all will be going on, and I think everybody would get a kick out of seeing the balloon. Um, is are people going to pay for the balloon ride also? Well, that that was one thing that we were, you know, still hadn't decided whether or not the the two fiftieth was going to underwrite some of that, or or someone making a donation to underwrite some of those costs. But um, it, it's certainly it's possibility that we can subsidize it some way. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was thinking all along that we were going to be charging. Yeah, the balloon rides to offset the cost. Uh, and to me, part of it is offsetting the cost, and part of it is from what I call crowd control, that we need to be able to limit the number of people and the time slots um, just to make it run smoothly and selling <laughs> tickets as a way to do so. The price of the tickets can be only part of, you know, may only be part of the total cost, the rest of it offset by us if we've got the money. But I feel like we have to do something to you know, pay to pace people. Yeah. I've got a few more things on family day when you're done with this. Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. Well, the other things that we were looking into were um, bounce house type things, um, coordinating with the weight and rat committee. I've talked with um, Chris Williams, who's the head of the rec committee. I work with him. Um, we're not quite sure what role we want them to play, but we did talk about them. Uh, we talked about food trucks and I've been able to get some lists from my work with the fair and then we're working on those to uh, see if we can get a couple food trucks in for that. Uh, craft projects for kids, and other games and activities that we still need to um, finish up. So that's kind of where we're at with the family day. Great, okay. Well, keep, keep us posted and 
know that you are the one event with a fixed budget because you are funded by the grant from the state. Uh, we can use up to $2,000 of that. Well, your maximum is set by the state. There were two events of the proposal. One was the balloon rise and one was a concert, which if we wanted to, we could make a case to, to move those to another day and try to use the state money for them. But for now, let's see what your budget looks like. As, as long as you keep it under that amount, we'll, we'll work from there. Um, parade. If I can, but don't go too far under because we do have that to spend on that event. Right. Yeah. Well, honestly, we don't want to give back money to the state. Right. Oh, but, but what I'm saying is- I can spend. <laughs> what I'm saying though is if we want to use, we may be able to use some of the state money to pay for the balloon rides because the balloon rides <clears throat> in our proposal to the state, the balloon ride was going to be part of family day, but it is a line item event on our proposal to the state. I don't know how the state's gonna to react to things, but let's keep in touch on what your budget is because we may have to move things around a little bit. It would it'd probably have to be used for the balloons, even though we might change the date, but it would probably have to be used for balloon line rides. Right, that's my thing. Um, the other issue with the family day, because I've been looking at the food trucks and stuff, is cost. And um, we were concerned about um, checking with the food trucks. Like some of the food trucks, the cost of a sandwich was uh, 1085. To me, that is way out of price range for what would be available for families. So there was also an alternative we were thinking about is maybe going to a in town like a Tom's Hot Dogs and stuff and see if if we could make make arrangements with them to um, help us uh, put on uh, like a barbecue type not a barbecue but provide uh, hot dogs hamburgers um, chips soda at family day. So we we are researching that, and I was wondering, did has anybody um, hit up Tom's Hot Dog for anything? For I know I don't want to keep hitting the same people all the time. Joyce, have you been in touch with Tom? Um, I tried a couple times to get a hold of Gary and couldn't get him there. Um, but um, if I do, he's on my list of people to contact. Um, so maybe I can kind of introduce the idea and, um, and see what he has to say. I think sat a Saturday in June is going to be a busy day at his business. So I'm not sure that he could staff something like that, um, well, but he might have good advice for like, be able to maybe supply the ingredients more or less at cost or, um, you know, whatever he's able to do, um, so that, uh, if we were to run a uh, grill there or something. Yeah, um, sure. I think then you have to be careful you're following Board of Health regulations and serve safe and all that stuff too. Mm, yeah, I understand there are yeah, people in the sure. historical society who understand how to run a grill. Uh, so the historical, <laughs> I'll speak from the historical society. Gary did come to us, it's coming again. So he came on a Sunday and brought his equipment and it worked very well. Oh, okay. I mean, I was thinking, you know, that we could, instead of him having to staff all of it, that we could have volunteers help staff it so he's not paying his people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that was just the, that was just the direction we're kind of going to save yeah. families money. I think that makes sense. You know what I was just thinking? I would bet you nickel if you went to the Legion, the American Legion, the post um, in Deerfield, that they would help you out. Well, that's as far as volunteers, they just put on a barbecue and they know how to do it. So maybe they could run that for you with getting the food from um, Tom's Hot Dog and have that's it as a donation. I bet they'd help you. Very interesting thought. 
Thank you. Okay, moving on. Anything else on family day? Okay, so keep us posted. Uh, parade. Well, I only have one bill so far that will come in, and that's for the Shriners for $5,000. I, I have not been able to hire any other bands, um, but I'm still, we're still working on it. So this, the invitations have gone out. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, the information is on the website, on the Whaley website. And as far as $25,000, I don't, I mean, it can be cut. It can go up, but I don't know what what else we want to do. Okay, let's let's just give that one time, and for the time being, we'll leave it at twenty five. Um, if that's okay with you, that's the number that you had given. Well, I think it looks it looks to me like it was cut ten thousand dollars already, but that's okay. I'm not sure how we got to the twenty five. Maybe that was when we took out the we took, mummers. The, we took out the mummers. But you didn't take any money. Yes. No, yeah, obviously you did. But how much were the mummers gonna be? Because the mummers were in your original budget. And I may be wrong with where that number came from. This is why we're going through this, is I'm not dictating these. This is what I've got in my records, but you can tell me that I'm wrong. Well, that's fine. It's, that's it is what it is. So, and that's fine. Okay. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with this. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, Keith, you and I wanted to talk about the tent. Yeah, the the tent scenario is certainly looking for the tent, which would be an expense that we need to you more or less figure out the size that's going to be needed at the fire station. And if the tent's going to be left there for the polka band, which is where we were suggesting that be so that the parking lot be used uh, as the dance floor type of thing. So we need to know what size tent we need there. And I'm thinking that between the tents that we have at the elementary school and the tent that the town acquired from the south county senior center those will probably be adequate or i'm hoping would be adequate for the family day at hurley Heath, um so that we could maybe save cost and not have to have a big tent down at hurley Heath also but basically yeah we need to figure out what that tent is going to cost and factor that in to the different events how do we determine what size we need? So, because we need that to get costs. What's that? How do we determine what size tent we need? Because we need the size in order to get costs. You know, I, I think it's probably just a matter of um, maybe like John and I looking, talking about things a little further, measuring the parking lot and, you know, where we're going to put the, the stage, et cetera. And and go from there. Okay. Call Hilltown. They'll give you an estimate. That's that would be probably my my plan would be contacting Hilltown. Great. Any of these things, as you get revised costs, email me and I will put them into this spreadsheet. You all have access to well, I think all of most most of you have access to the spreadsheet because this is the bottom half of the same spreadsheet that we've been using for scheduling the events. I should have shown you where this was if, if you need, but it's probably better not to make changes directly to the spreadsheet, but rather to email me so that I know what's changed and we can keep track of things. Some of the other items like underneath the tent, the infrastructure, I know quite some time ago we had discussed using a, um, and I can't remember the name of it, but a porta potty company locally. Um, you're gonna need to have those moved around from location to location, trash. Um, um, Monty Archibald, I believe was one person that was a 
potential person that could help coordinate some of the trash issues, but some of the other infrastructure things, police details, things of that nature are still got to be um, ironed out. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to put a line item there. Because again, look at our number. Right now, we only have a little, you know, we don't have a lot to go. If I put in $2,000 for that, we are in the red. And we know that is going to cost money. So this is why I, I have to beg everyone to you know, keep working on the fundraising. And if there's something that can be cut back, because we are too close to where we need to be. Let me come back to marketing in a minute. Susan, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, is anybody else going to use the fire station that week for any events? Is there anything else scheduled that week? During the week? I mean, we have, oh, the polka night is always the 18th. That's the week before. Okay. I'm a, how come I didn't have that? Oh. I guess I, we would want to attend for that. I answered my own question. Okay. Love when that happens. I'm off the hook. Time caps. There you go. There are two parts to the time capsule. One is the box itself, which Keith and Don were working on having something created. And the other is, and probably not for tonight, but we've got to start thinking about contents. What do we want to put in the time capsule so that, you know, for example, if we want letters from children, which I know we've done 50 years ago, we have time for that to happen. Um, we have time to collect things if we want anything fabricated. We need to get moving on that. Town gifts. Um, he did some research on this. And I think this is the only way I know how to. I'm trying to share my screen. I can, we can see it. You can see that. Oh, okay. Okay. That's why I can't show you. Can't find that button because it's already clicked. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I can run with this. Um, basically Please. on Swenson Granite and Swenson is the company that provided the benches at the Veterans Memorial. And so I went on their website looking to see what they might have. And this was, you know, you got to look, sort of look at it and just realize that this is just a, you know, one of the pictures they have on their website. But basically what I was proposing and looking at was in the center of the bench on the back, about where the word Sean is, would be the center would be our Waitley's 250th logo. And then off to the left would be 1771 and off to the right would be 2021 and then another thing that could be either incorporated on the front or on the back could be our our logo that we I mean our slogan that we had which was Waitley the the one and only yeah, yeah. yeah so you know something like that and that was a it was a it's a starting point I just wanted to try to get an idea budget wise and the bench that would this bench would be five feet long or five feet wide i guess you'd say and that cost is going to be somewhere in the 25 to three thousand dollars depending on exactly how much engraving we have done and so that's it's a starting point i know allison bell was trying to incorporate some other things and if her idea wants to be accepted, that's fine with me, but I just looking to, for, you know, the fact that we're running sort of tight on time for the lead time on this bench was um, almost two months. So I don't wanna, um, we can't wait too long if we're gonna do something like that. I had a long talk with Allison this afternoon about this because she knew she couldn't make the meeting tonight. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to re represent her viewpoints. I don't necessarily agree with them, but I will, since she can't be here. Her concern for a couple things. 
does it look funereal was her word. Does it look like it's from the cemetery and got lost? Uh, does, is the style appropriate for placement in the historic district? Does it look too, I, just not fitting in well with that? Um, she was also questioning the materials of, is it appropriate to have something of granite that isn't a local stone that's from Vermont? Well, we really couldn't come up with an option for something that is local. And we want something that will last hundreds of years. Um, granite does that. So I wanted to express those viewpoints and then put this out to the committee what do we think of this design? Are I, do we agree with what Keith is proposing? Because if we do, then I will try to talk to the library board tomorrow night at their meeting and we can place an order. If we don't agree with this, we have to figure out what it is we do want and move quickly. So I open the floor for comment. I think it's very classy. I really do. And I think the biggest thing is that you, if you had anything else, it would be a lot bigger and a lot higher and it would spoil the view from all points. I don't see, see anything wrong with that. I think what Keith's done is great. I really do. I like it. That's Thank me. You. Other comments? I, I feel like, like Vermont is local. We are Vermont. It's good. I like the simplicity of the design proposed as well. Any opposed, anybody want to voice opposition, then I will take a vote. I mean, I, I will I will interject that, you know, you know, obviously I I work and see what kind of rocks are available in Waitley an awful lot. And native wise attempting to find something that could be, you know, again, cut, you know, you really would be looking at something like ledge, um, whereas it wouldn't necessarily be a nice smooth surface to sit on, that, that at least that's how I envision it. Um, and you just, you don't travel around and see any stone that I would consider to be native from Waitley that is used in anything like this. Certainly, um, and it was used at the Veterans Memorial is when you go out to Goshen, the Goshen stone is very flat and is very pro um, pr prominent in using that in stone walls. Um, you could potentially do something with that for a bench. But again, um, the granite in my mind is a, very, is a much harder stone. And if this was put in place, I can envision it being pretty much there eternally you know there should be no it's not going to de degrade in a for many many years when it my husband more comfortable too keith yes when my husband was in charge of the memorial and he's he consulted with keith he went all over he went everywhere trying to find the best bench he could find benches for the town and that's why he ended up ended up with a company that Keith is talking to you about because they guaranteed their work and they came up with a wonderful product. So we were, he was, he went everywhere with Vermont, he went everywhere. I can't tell you how many cemeteries and places we visited to get the right thing for Waitley. So I trust Keith. What is the name of the company? Swenson, Swenson Granite. Yeah. Okay. They have a, they, their local office is in South Hadley, but they have many, off, or many locations throughout New England. Any um, other comments before we vote? Yeah, um, if we want something that looks local, um, Ashfield Stone might, would, would have stuff that's similar to what uh, we've got here in Whiteley. Yeah, yeah, Don. That's why I mentioned they, 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 they do. How you know? However, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I did not pursue that um, to know whether or not they can put together a bench like this. Um, 
and what hey, that did you know if Jim talked to them? Let me talk ask him. Hey, Jim. If, if he vetted Ashfield, I would, yeah, I would want to learn it. You went to Swinton Granite, right? Can you tell them about Swinton Granite right Swinton here? They want to know about this. They're looking at a bench and why you didn't get it at Ashfield, Ash Goshen. Oh, I went to Swinton Granite. They had a, a huge assortment, but they run several retail outlets in New England. And I saw the one I liked, and that's what I bought. They have a lot of choices there. Did, did you talk to Ashfield Stone? Did no, you? I did not. Okay. No. I mean, I certainly don't mind at least inquiring. Um, at this point in time, if we wait till February, I certainly know that that's time enough to to still have it made before June. So I can I can inquire and report back to our next meeting at least to see if something could be done from Ash without a Ashfield Stone or Goshen Stone. Jim, do you know where the granite came from that was used? I'm sorry, please. Where again. the granite came from that was used? Where where it came from? Yeah. Uh, they, I think their quarries are in New Hampshire. Okay. New Hampshire and Vermont. So it's not like we're getting it from somewhere you know, far, far away. Very no, no. mostly it's, mostly it's New England stone. Yeah. Um, I can't I can't promise every one of them is, but because um, I know their their retail establishments are mostly in New England. So okay. my guess is they probably come out of Barry, Vermont, or. New England, New Hampshire. So that's what I did. Okay. And I was, and by the way, I'm very pleased with what we got. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're, they're really nice. Okay, if so I, I guess I'm putting it to the group of, do we want to vote on doing this bench or do we want to wait and see if um, there's something from Ashfield? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Ashley just gave let me see if you all see this. It's thinking about it. So Ashley just sent me. Are you seeing that on my screen or not? Yes. Yes. Okay. So these benches, this is Ashfield Stone. To me, this is going to wear this. And you stone. know, that one's up at like looks like poet seat. They have one up a poet seat corner just like that because I have a picture of my grandson in it. And it's kind of weird and it's very thin. I didn't yeah. like it. I worry that that's not gonna. I I want it to be there in five hundred years. Yeah. No. Goshen Stone, Go, Goshen Stone, and and Ashfield Stone are very different. And yeah. uh, Ashfield Stone traditionally is used for walls, and Goshen Stone is used more for. Um, uh, like it cleaves differently. The face cuts different on it, but most of it comes down from uh, you know right down the road. You know, now that I think about, it, I think Swenson has a quarry in in Nashville. I think they have one there too. Okay. Nashville, where, Tennessee. Sorry, where? Yes. They have them everywhere. Okay. So what and I know he and Keith went around trying to find stones to use to make the benches out of it, Waitley, and there's nothing there to do the plaques on it. They couldn't find anything. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I don't mind to follow up. I can come back with some pricing from Ashfield. Obviously, you know, that other one that has a back on it, you know what it would cost for engraving and things of that nature like that one right there um i can report back next month do people like that if that's no. what what they can do are we even interested in that i don't like it, it. looks too thin i, I don't like it <laughs> i like okay. it but i think it, i like it because it looks very modern to me <laughs> it looks like it's breakable Agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, I think understanding the durability of any of the designs is going to be important in our decision. 
So if Ashfield or the other place can give us an idea of what the lifetime of these benches could be, that would be practical information to have. It'd be about a million years. <laughs> As a geologist. <laughs> the way this is designed, um, you've got a span between the two legs, but that also ties into the back, which strengthens the whole thing. So it breaking is not going to happen. And it'll take a million years to weather that thing away. Okay. But it, Don, wouldn't you agree that, I mean, obviously the gra the granite is a much more durable. The The Ashfield material is is a schist, a schist and it's a softer rock. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's more durable, but in the time span that we're looking at. Not really okay. Oh. So where, it's going to be more want, comfortable. <laughs> where do we want to leave it? Do we want to vote tonight? Do we want to wait uh, till next month? If, if I can suggest, if we can get any kind of feedback from Goshen and Ashfield and just commit to voting next month. Okay. On whatever we have feedback. at that point. That gives and, us enough time to make our June date because not only do they need two months to fabricate it, you need time to install it and all. Yeah, yes. that, that would be fine. Okay. Can I request that pictures of the potential benches be sent out an email prior to the meeting? Because I'm on a lap, I'm on a tablet, and it's hard for me to actually see the okay. bench. But so I tend to I tend to go with the granite bench. It looks more substantial. Okay, let's let's get a little more information and vote um, next month. So I encourage all of you to come back next month. Susan, okay. can I say something about this for a minute? Yeah, please. So can we clarify which Goshen stone we're talking about? Because there's two Goshen stones. There's Judd stone and then there's Goshen stone. So Keith, which one are you going to reach out to? I, I have not gotten that far. I... Okay, well, my aunt and um, uncle own Goshen, Judd stone. So I see they sell memory benches. So I will be happy to contact them and see what they offer, if you would like. Okay, sure. Okay. Great, thank you. Yeah. Excellent. And you can get Goshen stone or Ashfield stone, any thickness, any type of top material, whatever else you want it to look like. It's that that bench that was the one that looked thin is uh, it's just the way it was cut. So. Yeah, I, I think I, I need to see e examples of what can be done with each type of stone. Okay, so we will revisit that next month. Meanwhile, Allison is working on the panorama um, and the two are gonna be independent at this point. We're not trying to coordinate them. Hidden history and active map, there's really nothing to update on that. Quilt we talked about. Uh, really quick on souvenirs. Fred, do you wanna update where we are on the milk bottles? Yeah, uh, we've got the first roughly 100 of the milk bottles that have been engraved with our logo. And I'm working with uh, Dan over in Sunderland to do the rest. I had a thought, and if someone's got a good relationship at T Guys, I just had a thought that as a way to maybe boost sales of these things, if we could tie in with T Guys and get a like a 250th blend that gets put into these milk bottles, mm. that, that that would be a good souvenir. Yeah, I, I know Chris was on as far as contacting them for um, donation, but I can talk, I know Oliver on a personal level, I can talk to Oliver. Okay, if, if you can do that, because uh, we'd probably have to, you know, as we heard with Yankee Candle, it's too late for a candle. But if we could do something to promote sales of our 500 milk bottles by putting something else in them that people would want. Uh, if, you want if you want to swing by, pick one up, Keith, oh, we yeah. have them. Right. My other uh, thought is we were talking about- It, the it was candles. just a thought that I had. And the other thing is we still we have to come up with pricing on 
the yeah. bottles again with an eye towards try to move quantity of bottles because we, we do have 500 of them. We started this conversation last month and we had talked about $6 a piece, two for 10. But we had said that you know, we, we hadn't settled on that because only moving two at a time doesn't do us a lot of good. We want to move more than that. We want to incent people to buy three or even four. So what do people propose in the way of pricing? Our cost for each is 275, right, Ben? Right. So if, if I can back up just one second to the T guys for Keith, if you talk to them, we can probably talk to Dan and if we want if they wanted to pay for it, we could also have their logo engraved on it on the other side. Okay. Yeah, you know, it would cost another whatever, you know, dollar seventy-five to do per bottle, but it probably could be done. Well, how about potentially putting something on the cap? Which might the, cost less to do. Maybe yeah, we've also got white cap, caps I that wouldn't... so somebody was saying something. I I would be hesitant to put a business's uh, in, engraved on the bottles if it's a memorial bottle, to be truthful. Mm. You could do it well, like that, somebody I, said. I, I don't see it as any different from putting a banner up in an event that a company sponsors. No, no I, I, I mean, see a difference. I, I don't mean engrave the bottle. You could put a, <laughs> um, like a tag around it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that rather than actually engraving the bottle, because some yes, people may not see. like it okay. being engraved. I mean, we wouldn't have to engrave all of the bottles either. We could do. No, but, but you know, like a like a tag that goes around yeah, little, the top yeah, I know. to yeah. identify who, who uh, contributed. Yeah, yeah I, I just think it might be a good tie in with T guys to to work that way. <clears throat> yes, it, I think that's a great do? idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. Does anybody have a sense of wax barn? Since Yankee can't do candles for us, might wax barn? Because then I'm wondering, could we do candles in the, in the bottles? They're on my list. I can ask them, Susan. OK. They're, they're, a, smaller, they're a smaller company. They may be willing to, to make something for the Waitley 250th in a candle. That's they have a lot of customized ones, so my guess is possible they can move more, much more swiftly than Yankee can. If anybody wants one of the bottles to go as you're calling on companies because you think there could be a fit there, just swing by. We've got hundreds of them in our garage, as we've talked about, <laughs> so that you can show them. No, what the, the ones in the garage aren't engraved yet. I've got to get, <laughs> get <laughs> okay. those done. Okay, we have only you know, only a hundred sitting in the house. Anyway, the last, and I'm gonna skip over the commemorative. Right, but 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 before you move on, I'm sorry, I, I, it was my fault that we moved back. I wanna get the pricing settled so oh, right, Ashley yeah. can put them up on the website yes. with a price. So yeah. that, that we, we need to set on where we come down on a price point. Can you remember, can you remind us what the prices you mentioned earlier are, please? They're, they're costing us two, yeah, 275 okay. a piece. Um, my you know, thinking was something like you know, $6 a piece or seven fifty. What? Seven fifty. You usually you figure pay? double plus shipping for retailers. So if you're paying two seventy five, so that's three six. A buck something, make them seven fifty, and you'll blow them out. Makes a difference too if there's something inside the bottle. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, if there's something inside the bottle, then the price yeah, changes. Yeah. But right now, there's air That's inside a the bottle. Reasonable amount. Will people pay that? Yes. I think they will. I think because it's a memento type of item. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it has something in it, then maybe it's ten dollars instead of seven fifty. Yeah, I think I think you know the cost if it's filled depends on what's in. And it's it. a way you market it too. If you market them 
for like Christmas gifts and favors, party favors, people would kick them right up. I think you get people to pay $10 for that bottle, no problem. I do too. $10 for a plastic cup at Fenway Park because it says Red Sox on it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you'd have any trouble with that at all. No, I don't either. I think 750 is a good number. It sounds good. Get three for 20. <laughs> and then they think you they're going to get 20 bucks. You can tell I'm a merchant. <laughs> you can fill it full of beer and sell them as a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> Has someone reached out to BBC yet? <laughs> no, they should. Other thoughts? Should we put it to a vote of 750 for 20? I'm just, just to toss it. I think 750, three for 20 sounds good. I think it sounds great. Okay. I like that. I'll too. second that. I'm going to do the roll call. Chris? I like that idea. Okay, Adelia? Okay. Jane? Yes. Zach? Yep. Bill? Yep. Costi? Yes. Fred? Yes. Chip? Yep. Bates? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Keith? Yes. Katie? Yep. Brenda? Yes. Sarah? Yes. John? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Steve? Yes. Lola? Yes. John? <laughs> Don is chewing. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley? Yes. I say yes. I also want to ask, do we, do we think we're going to sell 500? And this depends on also whether we fill them or something. Because it costs us money to engrave them, that if we engrave a lot more than we're going to sell, does that make sense? I don't know that we have to decide that until we know if we're going to fill them, because that'll make a difference. But I would say, Fred, at this point, give him a couple hundred, but I don't know that we need to get all five. I, I haven't. His pricing was sort of $2 a piece. A dollar seventy-five each if we do five hundred. I did not talk to him about in between. You know, what if we do three hundred? What's the price? So I, I will give him another batch to do. Uh, and actually, you can wow. now put them up online with that pricing. We right. will deliver. We will deliver locally and work out shipping if necessary. But the shipping yeah. would be extra. Yeah, right. they would if, if if ship they would have to pay shipping. But if it's within the town, we can deliver. Got it. Good. So we go on to marketing. Sure. <coughs> I want to I I want to start thinking about how we are going to market all of these events that we're doing. My first question is to you, Joyce. What's the next deadline for the scoop? Uh, it's the end of February. Okay. Um, I can get you an exact date in a moment. It's in one of these windows open on my. That's computer. okay. We we have time, but I'm thinking we may want to start making a big splash of the basically save the date. Here are the things. Put them on your calendar. Yeah, Ashley, major, yeah, major yeah. article. Yeah. yeah. I'll, okay, so I'll give you, or Joyce, you know, we'll get you Chris Larrabee's email. The He's the Gazette recorder, uh -huh. reporter, and maybe he'll do an article soon about plans. I can also get you into Channel 22, because I'm the professional grandmother for the hospice shop, and I'm uh -huh. on at least once a month. And uh, we even, we start, I started because I did the book sale here with the craft fair um, and the guy came and they like me. So I come at least once a month, I'll be on in another week and then for every holiday, but I know I could get him to probably come and spend some time here and tape it and show it on TV. I could also get, I know I can get the people on talking about it on the show. Fantastic. Yes. So I'll do that for you. Thank you. 
Ashley, can you take a look at the website? Uh, I was looking at it the other day. Since we are nailing down our schedule, we probably should update it because we had been pretty loose not knowing what was going to be when. Yeah, we've been have very big. To this document. No, and I'm just going to share it with you right now so that you have it. I didn't write anything. I just shared it with you so that I know that right. you've got the latest and greatest on that. Anybody else who needs the document shared, let me know. Um, but I want to get it out on the website. I want to get it in the street if we can get it in the Gazette or 22. So anywhere that we can get the word out. We need to start developing a marketing plan. Like I put $5,000 in here for marketing because if we're going to run ads in the Gazette, I have no idea what we're going to do. And I feel like we need a subcommittee to start thinking about that. Who would like to help with, with the marketing plan? I guess I will, Susan. Okay. Or, or do we know anyone else in town who's the marketing person? I will. And I'll tell you that the Channel 22 stuff, you don't have to pay for. That'll be free. Nice. Okay. Because it's a civic thing and it's an it's a nonprofit and they'll they'll come because they're always looking for events and they do it for everybody. They did a nice job for the parade, I guess. Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah. They did a good job there's for that. A, and there's a great little girl. Um that came from Greenfield. What's her? Is it Edwards? She's terrific. Is it Green? She works for Channel Twenty Two, but she did a great job on the memorial. And she's producing something, so um, I think that's going to be out. She had it on TV once, but she'd be a great contact too. And she works for the guys that I know at the station. Great. Okay. Ashley, I'd be happy. I'm so, sorry, Susan. I'd yeah. be happy to help you, Ashley, if you needed help. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Yes. It's going to be all hands on deck as we get closer to, to June. Well, we, yes. It's going to be all hands on deck and we need more hands. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes, which is something else that I want to put in the scoop item that we're going to need volunteers, not just for the planning, but for the execution. For each of the events, that's something else I wanted to ask you to do for next month is think through what you need in the way of manpower. For example, family day, do you need you know, people to run different booths? Um, you know, arts and craft show, do you need people to help set up? Any of the concerts, do we need people to take tickets? And I'm just skimming things. What will you need bodies for? Because we're gonna have to find those I'm bodies. Unfortunately, there's no internet. Unfortunately. All right, can I have a question? Are you going to charge people for their crafts, their craft booths, or is that just an art show of what the town has to offer? I, so far, it's just an art show, but if you'd like to join our meeting tomorrow night, we'd love to have you. No, because I'll tell you, Mary, Bob Smith's wife, Mary Ellen, did the work on our craft fair at the library, and she did a hell of a good job, and maybe we could get her to help. I'll ask her. I would love to be in contact with them, absolutely. Ask. What else do we have? Oh, Clearly, we didn't keep it to an hour this time, but I think we moved things along and covered a lot. But any other thoughts people have, questions? I'm giving you all a lot of homework for next month. Work on fundraising, budget for any events you're involved in, manpower needs. Uh, those are the goodies. Plus, of course, keep you know the event itself. Any other thoughts? Move to adjourn. Second. And I think this is the one thing that we don't have to do a roll call on. No, you still have to do a roll call on any vote. Also do roll call. Okay. Let's start at the bottom. Ashley. <laughs> Yes. Don. Bye. Lola. Yes. Steve. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Lisa. Yes. John. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Brenda. Yes. Katie. Yes. Keith. 
Yes. Bates. Yes. Chip. Yes. Fred. Yes. Plastic. Yes. Bill. Yeah. Zach. Yep. Jane. Yep. Adelia. Yes. Chris. Yes. And me, yes. Stay safe, everyone. Stay in touch. Let me know if you've got any updates on budgeting, on fundraising. Um, and we will see you all in a month. Thank yes. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.